You're watching News 4 In-Depth. One year ago, a deadly dog attack shook San Antonio and revealed just how much of a problem dangerous dogs are in our city. Just take responsibility. Take responsibility. Your dog's killed somebody. And the other lady I heard is in critical condition. Where do we go from here? We lost our dad. We wanted to make change at the same time. And now, one year later, where do we stand? Tonight, News 4 goes in-depth on dangerous dogs to see what has actually been done. Are we any safer? You are, are shedding the truth on this because nobody's taking it serious until you showed up. I was running for my life, literally for my life. What changes has the city made? And is there anything else that still needs to be done? News 4 In-Depth starts right now. Good evening and welcome to News 4 San Antonio in depth for the next half hour. We look extensively at the issue of dangerous dogs here in San Antonio. The big questions tonight. Are we better off compared to a year ago and what else still needs to be done? It's been almost one year since the tragedy that put dog attacks in the San Antonio spotlight. 81 year old Ramon Nahara and his wife were attacked by two pit bulls that got loose along Depla Street on the city's west side. It was a brutal mauling and neighbors used hoses and car horns to try and distract the dogs. Sadly, Ramon died as a result of his injuries. His wife critically injured and a San Antonio firefighter also bit. The couple who owned the dogs involved in that attack are both criminally charged. In fact, they were in front of a judge earlier this month. Abilene Schneider and Christian Moreno face charges of injury to the elderly and a dangerous dog attack resulting in death. We could know more on their case very soon. They have until March 8th to enter a plea deal. Still undecided if they will be tried together or separately. For the family of Ramon Nahara, though, the past year has been difficult. Their father and grandfather taken from them in a way they never could have imagined. But they also know that their tragedy could help to save other lives. The News 4 I team's Jordan Elder has been leading our coverage on this issue for the past 12 months. She joins us with the changes the Nahara family is still calling for. The Nahara family told me that dog attacks weren't an issue that they were really aware of. Of course, they miss their father, their grandfather, but they also want what happened to him to be an alarm bell for other families. Horrific scene, uh, horrific for the people that experience this. The fatal attack on Depla Street left a hole in the Nahara family that can't be filled. There's a lot of firsts this year, you know, a lot of firsts without my dad. But now they're using their voices for change. My father lived protecting his country and he died protecting his loved one. At the state level, Raymond Nahara and other members of his family advocated for the bill that would have allowed anonymous reporting about bites and attacks and given ACS more power to investigate these cases. It was, you know, devastating that we didn't get it passed. The governor vetoed that bill, but Raymond and lawmakers say they'll keep fighting for it. It's just really out of control and something needs to be done. Change doesn't come easily, I guess, in the, in the politics. And uh, I'm hoping that we could um, um, come together as a community. Here in San Antonio, do you think that the city has done enough? Um, I've, they've taken some small steps. I think they've been reactive to what my father happened to my father, but there's a lot that needs to be done. He says there needs to be better notification about dangerous dogs in your area, maybe a hotline for ACS, and lots of information about consequences. His message for you? Keep reporting on loose dogs and reporting on dogs that possibly could be dangerous in your neighborhood. Raymond says his family knows better than anyone. It could save lives. For the News 4i team, I'm Jordan Elder. We posed the question to the Naharas, now we're posing it to you. Do you think enough has been done by the city in the last year to address dangerous dogs? Go to news4sa.com to vote. We'll check back on the results later in the show. Now, that wasn't the only deadly dog attack in the city last year. Another one happened September the 5th along Heidelberg Street on the northeast side. 47-year-old Paul Striegel was attacked by a neighbor's dog in that case. He was taken to the hospital, and nearly a month later, he died from his injuries. The dog was euthanized and the owner of the dog receiving three criminal citations. Now, what has actually changed in the wake of all of these tragedies? The biggest development in the last year, the creation of a dangerous dog registry.
registry right here in San Antonio, and it was a result of the relentless reporting done by the News 4 I team. We spent months trying to bring you the addresses of dangerous dogs, and the Attorney General forced the city to hand them over. And three weeks after we released our registry, the city launched one of their own. Here's how it works. If a dog is deemed dangerous, according to state criteria, it'll be visible to the public on that map you see there. City leaders plan to add photos of the dogs in the future. If you've been bitten or attacked and want to file an affidavit, we've got a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that over on our website, news4sa.com. You can also report a dog that has attacked another animal. Remember, the only way the city can investigate is if you speak up. Some Texas lawmakers say they support the idea of a statewide dangerous dog registry. It's a similar idea getting serious consideration in Florida. Texas wouldn't be starting from scratch either. Austin, Dallas, Arlington, and San Antonio are just some of the cities that have already got their own registries. Lawmakers say this would be a statewide resource that could help people make decisions about public safety. We spoke to State Senator Jose Menendez about the idea earlier this month. I think it would be a great idea for the state to require all cities to create this. State Representative Liz Campos tells us she plans to introduce a statewide registry bill during the next legislative session. The News 4i team was also able to get results for a northeast side neighborhood. Two dogs were seized by animal care services after a string of reported attacks against other animals. Neighbors say they made several calls to the city after a group of dogs attacked their pets and one woman decided to reach out to the News 4i team. After we got involved, officers captured the two dogs believed to be behind those attacks. Dean Springer told us her dog George was attacked just a couple of weeks ago. She says if the city's response had been quicker, other animals may have been spared. When one animal is tortured, you know, we, we all are tortured because, you know, they're all of, we're all one, we're all together. Since that attack, George has been recovering. Springer and her neighbors telling us they plan to file aggressive dog affidavits. That's a designation for dogs that attack or threaten other animals. During the course of the year, we also conducted several investigations into how dangerous dogs are handled. When a court registers your dog is dangerous, it triggers a set of requirements for you to meet. But the News 4 I team looked into how often dogs are removed when their owners don't comply. Turns out it's not that often. During our investigation, city leaders said they want to try every possible option before removing an animal from someone's care, even dogs considered dangerous. Last year, there were about 45 people brought to court for not complying with the state's dangerous dog requirements. Of that group, ACS executed 20 warrants to seize dogs. Out of that number, five dogs were ordered to be put down. They want to make sure that we don't take a permanent solution for a temporary problem. So they want to give those individuals the opportunity to come into compliance. And in one recent case, three pit bulls who attacked a woman were ordered to be put down. It happened in November along a street near Fort Sam Houston. A woman had her ear actually ripped off by the dogs who were not registered as dangerous at the time. Two of those dogs immediately surrendered, but the third dog was subject to a municipal hearing. The judge decided that that third dog should also be euthanized. The owner also receiving 10 citations from the city. So what exactly can we expect in 2024? One thing city leaders say they're planning to do is count the number of stray and roaming dogs across our city. The last time a study like this was completed back in 2019, according to those results, it's estimated there were more than 34,000 roaming dogs in San Antonio and more than 90% of them were thought to be owned. That means people were letting their dogs get off of their property. Only about 3% of the dogs identified were truly stray dogs. In the future, ACS plans to conduct the study every other year. Still ahead, one San Antonio woman is still recovering from a dog attack that happened seven years ago. Her message for recent victims and her story of survival. Over the past year, the city has made several promises when it comes to dealing with dangerous dogs, but have they kept those promises? We'll update you on what's been done and if it's enough. You're watching News 4 San Antonio. Welcome back to News 4's in-depth special report on dangerous dogs here in San Antonio. Tonight we are examining where we are nearly one year after a deadly dog attack on the city's west side. For the past year, the News 4i team has been fighting for accountability when it comes to dog attacks. 
The numbers show that severe dog attacks are on the rise. Those are bites that cause broken bones, disfiguration, and in some cases, sadly, even death. During our reporting, we talked to a woman who was attacked seven years ago. Doris Mixon Smith lost part of her left arm and her face was injured. She wants to see changes to prevent this from happening to anyone else, and she says she wants the city to consider banning certain breeds, including pit bulls. You know, I'm not trying to take these people dogs away from them, but it's obvious that those dogs are killing people and maiming people. They need to make them be responsible for their dog. Now, the dog attack she suffered back in 2017 didn't prompt any changes in public policy, but she shares her message of optimism with other survivors and continues to push for change. One of the people Doris shared her message with personally is Max De Los Santos. He was brutally attacked by dogs last year and lost both of his legs. De Los Santos was mauled by a pit bull and German Shepherd as he stood outside his home along Fieldgate Drive in August. Just two days later, or two days earlier rather, someone had called ACS to report those dogs. The call went unanswered. The dog's owner was arrested late last year. Danielle Henderson is charged with serious bodily injury which is a third degree felony. Good evening, I'm Melissa Vega, and this is your News 4 Snapshot. Cell phone service is back to normal this evening. All major carriers were hit with a major outage overnight, resulting in thousands of people in our area unable to make phone calls or access their mobile network. Full service was restored by early afternoon. A group of local officials introduced an idea that would require the Texas power grid to be connected to other grids in the U.S. They say the Connect the Grid Act would help prevent major outages like the one that happened back in 2021. Opponents of this idea argue that Texas should keep an independent power grid in order to avoid federal regulation. And San Antonio police are investigating after a man was shot to death along West Avenue near Bassey Road. It happened around 10 this morning behind an insurance building. Police say it happened after two men got into an argument and one of them pulled out a gun and shot the other before running away. And that's a look at tonight's News 4 Snapshot. Is the city doing enough to deal with dangerous dogs in our community? The I team will go step by step through city leaders promises to see if they've kept their word. Back to news for in depth dog bites aren't just an issue here in San Antonio. They are also on the rise out in Austin and authorities think they know why both cities have the type of weather that allow dogs to breed year round. Also, the COVID pandemic impacted a lot of spay neuter programs in both cities as people were less likely to get their pets fixed. After the dog attack last February, the city came out with several goals to prevent it from happening again. And tonight, the News 4i team's Jordan Elder is checking in on each promise to see where the city stands with them. About two weeks after Ramon Nahara was killed, city manager Eric Walsh released this memo about cracking down on irresponsible pet owners. Here's where all of those efforts stand nearly a year later. One of the first changes that ACS made is that they can now criminally and civilly cite you if your dog bites someone and records show they're using it. The month after the Depla attack, the city wrote 282 criminal citations. In December, that went up to 540. The city is also expanding their Good Neighbor program, which targets areas where a lot of 311 calls are coming in, especially about animals. And records show they're also canvassing for compliance in those areas. We told you earlier this week that the municipal court dockets have been expanded so that dangerous dog cases could get resolved faster. And ACS told us that program is helping hold people accountable. The city was also pushing for new dangerous dog laws. We walked you through every step of that process last year. The bill passed both houses, but was then vetoed by the governor. This year, ACS got a record breaking budget and they've set out to fix a lot more of these issues. So we'll continue to keep you updated on that progress. For the News 4i team, I'm Jordan Elder. Well, we've spent the whole year investigating causes and solutions for dangerous dogs in San Antonio. This is the second special in-depth show that we've produced on the issue. If you want to watch it or any of our other in-depth shows, you can scan the code, the QR code on your screen. It'll take you straight to our YouTube page.